Vad är sett i betare, ett vetare, ett vetare är det. In spartia skimus autem eos. Tendan silva konkurket är allt urs i barn om vident ett minibus färdigt. Kuture tu sett manos eorum, sett ipsi carnites solicitur och carentis est. Calls performance is mesmerizing, breathtaking, says the Daily. One night only, world famous psychic and telekinetic Arvis Bennett. I would say it all began when Randall Carter declared in ancient history. We were thrilled. You see, the Carter family has a long history with Miskatonic University. Oh, he could have gotten in as a legacy, but no, he got in by virtue of his mind. He could have gone to any school of his choosing. Yale, Harvard, Stanford, Oxford, Cambridge. He always had a fondness for antiquities. I believe it was access to our school's special collections that eventually won him over. So Carter used to spend his uh, days and nights in the library's special collections unit. <laughs> While other undergrad students were doing the usual things, dating, drinking, Randall was hunched over rare books, very old books. Only five authentic copies of the book are known to exist. Here in London, of course, Paris, Buenos Aires, Harvard. <laughs> but I imagine Carter quite enjoyed entry to Miskatonic's Armitage collection. There he would have had nearly unfettered access to a Latin version first translated by Olaus Wormius. I did once catch him trying to abscond with the 17th century edition. Now, as his advisor, I knew damned well that he understood that no pieces were to be removed from the collection. I suppose he just found the library's hours to be too restrictive for his own research. You see, at the time, he was undergoing the arduous task of translating it from Latin into English. But Randall Carter would never finish his translation, nor his education. Having completed only two years at Miskatonic, Randall Carter emptied his trust fund and disappeared, only to re-emerge months later as a member of the Sea Herders. I'd just arrived at the university you know, to begin pursuing my doctorate. I didn't even know who Randall Carter was, that he was some prized protege. That is, not until the bombings. In 2014, Carter is alleged to have planted the bomb that destroyed a research vessel believed to have been a whaling ship. Four crew members died in the explosion, but the sea herders were quick to distance themselves from Carter, denouncing the bombing as the act of a lone wolf and not a representative of their ocean conservation society. Now a fugitive following the bombing, Carter was recruited by the eco-terrorist group The Deep Ones, who afforded him asylum in international waters. Of course we wanted him. Carter embodies our whole mission of purging the planet of the human scourge. The world flourished for billions of years without people, and it'll flourish again without them. The Deep Ones operate under the conviction that a mysterious underwater sound recorded in 1997, dubbed the Bloop, marked the beginning of the end for mankind. And some fear the group may have been emboldened after Russian hydrophones recorded a similar noise last week. The Deep Ones are not some eco-terrorist organization, they're a cult. Overshadowing their acts of terrorism is the belief that an ancient alien deity slumbers miles beneath the ocean. It's an idea that is explored in the book. And while the contents of the book are widely regarded as esoteric, it does hold a place in scientific history. In 1930, Miskatonic University launched its ill-fated Antarctic expedition. An advanced team, led by Professor Lake, a biologist, perished when a storm ripped through their camp. 
But according to Miskatonic archives, when a secondary team arrived, they reported discovering the remains of prehistoric specimens that could not be distinctly classified as plant or animal. One of the team members claimed the specimens resembled strange creatures depicted in the book. And while that may sound a little far-fetched, the team also reported having seen by plane what appeared to be unnatural formations among a previously undiscovered mountain range. Geology professor Patrick Blake says he's thrilled to be part of the expedition that will mark Miskatonic's long-awaited return to Antarctica. It is exciting uh, to think that, I mean, there's a real possibility that there are ancient ruins just waiting for us when we land. I mean, say what you will about global warming, climate change, but I don't think that, that area would even be accessible to us if it wasn't for the recent ice melts. Professor Blake gave no credence to reports of biological specimens, but did concede that a biologist will be part of the expedition. I'll be accompanying the team in my capacity as a medical doctor, of course, but also as a biologist. If any specimens are found, real-time analysis on site would be crucial. Meantime, each copy of the book remains under lock and key within the five institutions it calls its homes. But why is it so well guarded and kept from public view? So in addition to its antiquity, the arcane knowledge and rights that the book contains is considered by some scholars to be morally corrupt. Uh, portions of the grimoire are said not only to be a history of Travelers, we'll say, who arrived in prehistoric times, but also a codex on how to summon them. Now, if these travelers did actually arrive, and if some remain, and if the book were to fall into the wrong hands, then yes, it would be catastrophic. Qui dominato iterum? Qui amotus resurrexit? Ave Cthulhu! 